Hi everyone, this is Ken Search again. I hope you have enjoyed the previous video about the cancers, up to confirming and stage the disease. Congratulations! Wow! Now we have to go further deep down into the rabbit hole for the management of cancer. Starting from this episode, it could be a more serious tone. So let's get to it. This is all about the strategies. of managing cancers let's move on before we continue with the strategies of the tissue management let me take a few moments to revise the stage of disease so stage there is a stage 0. Stage 0 is a carcinoma in situ. Then there is a stage 1. Stage 1, the tumor is tiny. There is no positive lymph nodes. What about stage 2? Stage 2, yeah, it's still a small tumor. Maybe it's bigger. And there is no positive lymph nodes. Stage 3, the size doesn't matter. There is positive lymph nodes. And stage 4, this is a metastatic disease. First of all, we must understand what is oncological resection. So by definition, the oncological resection is the excision of the tumor. Alright, and it should be on block. On block means if let's say the tumor have already invaded the adjacent organ. So what should we do? We should take out the organ together with a adequate margin. So this is a excision of tumor on block and together with the main blood supply it should also one level proximal and one level distal to the main blood supply. I am going to give you an example, don't worry about that. And you must take out the regional lymph nodes usually up to tier 2 lymph nodes for those of you who don't know what is a tier 2 lymph nodes you can always refer back to the previous videos if not only the lymph nodes in also the, the lymphatic bearing tissues finally with a adequate margin If we have achieved an oncological resection, this is what we call a definitive surgery. If your surgery unable to achieve oncological resection, it is not a definitive surgery. It is just a debulking surgery. It's what have been described, excision of tumor on block. Let's say it already invaded the adjacent organ the adjacent organ must have been taken out and this in exists in the context that the patient must be acceptably functional what do we mean by that let's say this organ is a kidney and patient have two kidneys probably you want to take out one kidney but you must make sure the other kidney is functionally normal and patient is able to continue with the adjuvant therapy an example my favorite stomach cancer okay so stomach we must understand this how many blood supply are there 
there are about five of them, right? You have the left gastric, you have the splenic artery, right? Then you have the short gastrics, then you have the left gastroepiploid, and this one you go down and all the way to coma hepatic. You have the coma hepatic from celiac trunk. Then you go down, you have a right gastric through the GDA and you become a right gastro epiploid all the way down. Right? So let's say there is a tumor at the pylorus. Uh -huh. So what do we mean by excision of the tumor on block? You have to take out this tumor. All right, but you must take out the main blood supply. The main blood supply for this pyloric tumor is the right gastroepiploid, right? So this must be taken out. Whenever we take out the blood vessel, as far as possible, we must take out the origin of the blood supply. Why? That is the third things that we have to achieve, in which is the we want to take out the lymphatic bearing tissue remember this lymphatics always follows the artery so we want to take out as much lymph node as possible so we must go to the origin for one level proximal and one level distal what does it mean if one level above will be the left gastric all right and the left gastroepiploid because this is already a duodenum and one level this the you are unable to achieve so this is a caveat there so if you look at this if there is a pylori tumor we have to do at least a subtotal gastrectomy because you have already taken out the main blood supply which is of these four and the stomach is only being supplied by the short gastric so this is a subtotal gastrectomy and the lymph nodes you must go up to tire 2 so this one you have to do a D2 lymphadenectomy and it will fulfill the oncological resection Since we are already in the topic of oncological resection, once you have already taken out the sample, the pathologist will come and check your specimen, right? Check your sample, the margin, the proximal margin, the distal margin, even the circumferential margin, to see if there's any involvement of the tumor. We have a gradient of the resection which is we call it R0, R1 and R2 resection you must always achieve R0 resection R0 resection is there is no tumor infiltration or no tumor involvement in the margins Alright, R1 is there is a tumor mark, tumor involvement and it's microscopic. It's only been detected under the microscope. This is not intended. R2 is cross, is macroscopic. There is a tumor involvement at the macroscopic level. It is a debulking surgery and it's a palliative surgery. It's, it's not a definitive surgery. Today, I'm going to introduce you this Gunung Lamba theory. Okay, you don't get me wrong. This is an analogy, right? Let's say this is a Gunung Lamba. Gunung Lamba is one of a mountain in uh, place where I work in Kluang uh, and it's a very nice mountain 
you have a tree growing on top of the mountain. All right. So let's say the tree is a cancer. How are we going to take out the cancer? Some of my students will quickly will say, you can just take down the tree. All right. If you take down the tree like that, how about the roots? The roots of the tree will still be there. And this is what we call a debulking surgery. As what previously we have learned, this is a R2 resection. Usually in the tumor that is very chemosensitive or very radiosensitive, sometimes you can do that. This is especially true in the gynecology tumor. But as a GI surgeon, we do not do debulking surgery as a definitive surgery because this is not an oncological resection. So what we should do, we should do an oncological resection as what I have told, right? The band blood supply, you must take out and the medina leaf nodes, you must also take out. All right, and the adequate margin. This, this is a oncological resection. So now we have already taken out the tumor. How confident are we that the root of the tree or the cancer has already been taken out? This is where you come in with the adjuvant therapy. Right? Let's say there's a river nourishing the gunonaba. What you can do, you put some pesticide. <laughs> if you put the pesticide, it will go into the whole mountain. Correct? So it will kill off most probably is the root of the tree that has been left behind and we don't leave it purposely. This is because uh, there's a limit in human eye vision, you see. So all this microscopic uh, residual tumor hopefully could be killed. This is a systemic chemotherapy. There are a lot of regimes there, alright? I don't think you guys need to know that, right? You just need to know why you give a systemic chemotherapy because you want to kill off the microscopic residual tumor. Number two, what you can do, you can use a flamethrower and you burn the wound. So, potentially kill off the residual tumor, which is microscopic. So, this is actually a radiotherapy. What else? Let's say there is a fertilizer and there's are some farmers, right? They're trying to put the fertilizers on top of the hill that you have already taken out the tree. We chase out all these farmers so there won't be any fertilizers and this is a hormonal therapy. Maybe you are a good friend with Tony Stark. The Iron Man, right? You have these nanobots, and these nanobots can precisely look into the wound and look into the whole system if there is any residual tumor and kills it. This is what we call a targeted therapy. Let's say that is a uh, some kittens or some animals, you know, uh, they're trying to pee on it. That is a fertilizer as well for the for the tree, right? So we try to chase out all these animals. So what do we get is the immunotherapy by using the immune system to uh, inhibit the growth of the cancer. So if you look at it. Adjuvant therapy, we have uh, the most traditional is the chemotherapy. We have radiotherapy. We have hormonal. 
we have targeted therapy and also we have uh, immunodone therapy and all this is within our amygdalium to manage cancer so the strategies I will summarize for you that is actually three plus one strategies okay let me tell you one by one the first strategy what we can do is out front surgery then plus minus adjuvant therapy this is the first strategy second strategy what we can do we give new adjuvant therapy first if you want to give a new adjuvant therapy you must couple with a definitive surgery and lastly coupled with a adjuvant therapy number three is palliative if you look back at the staging which one is suitable for the first strategy yes of course is stage zero and stage one right so stage zero and stage one will have a strategy number one so new adjuvant therapy and coupled with a definite surgery it would be the stage two and stage three this is strategy number two all right so you give new adjuvant first and then you give you must couple with a definitive surgery and plus minus the adjuvant therapy right stage four is strategy number three which is a palliative so what do we mean by palliation do we do surgery for palliation the palliative surgery can be done in that four B's right what are the four B's burst bleed block and pain right you can do a palliative surgery on this four condition right just now I said there are three plus one strategy right because the fourth one is a rather new idea right so the fourth strategy is what we call a conversion what does it mean it means that let's say the patient is stage 4 disease but it could be an early stage 4 so what can we do we consider or we treat the stage 4 like a stage 3 so we use strategy number two in which we do a neoadjuvant therapy then we couple with definitive surgery and plus minus adjuvant therapy and for undergrad you guys do not need to know this strategy you guys need to know these three strategies right and for those postgrad it's good to know and you can also comment down there and let us learn together those strategies to manage the cancer how to decide the patient is going for surgery or not all right we are going to talk about the operability and receptability for the coming videos and in summary how I'm going to decide is the stage of disease Number two is the patient performance status. Number three, the patient nutrition status. And number four, do not forget patient's autonomy. This is how we decide if the patient is going to for surgery or not for surgery on which strategy. All right.
hope you have already gone through the whole sets of video and this is the strategy of managing cancers and to further look at the strategy the most important point is that we have to take out the lymph and the lymphatic bearing tissues which means you need to take out the main blood supply for its origin and you must make sure you have already cleared up to at least tier 2 of the lymph nodes and this is in the context that the patient's post-op recovery is good because if you look at the strategies there is always adjuvant therapy you need to get the patient out and to commence the adjuvant therapy at the very least one month after surgery in order to get a better patient's outcome hope you guys enjoyed today's video and lastly please like subscribe and hit the notification button we are going to talk about operability and receptability for the next coming video at the same time same day and same channel and this is k-search Bye.